Our featured guest this month is Javicia Leslie, who was born into a military family in Augsburg, Germany, but raised in Maryland and attended Hampton University in Virginia, where she began appearing in productions like Chicago, For Colored Girls, and Seven Guitars. After graduating, she relocated to Los Angeles and landed roles in BET's The Family Business, the CBS comedy drama God Friended Me, MacGyver, Prototype, and was the lead in the feature film Always a Bridesmaid. Last year, she landed the title role in the CW superhero series Batwoman, playing the homeless ex-con Ryan Wilder, who takes up the mantle of Batwoman to avenge her mother's death and has been kicking butt and taking names ever since. I sat down with Javicia recently to discuss her origin story, the perks of being Batwoman, her extensive fitness regimen that includes Muay Thai, weapons, and boxing, as well as what's in store for Ryan Wilder and Batwoman in 2022. Here's what she had to say. Well, today we are honored and super excited to have the incredible Javicia Leslie on the show. Javicia, welcome to Everything Zen. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And I love the name of your show. It's, it's a little bit about Zenoscope and it's a little bit about being totally chill. That's my thing. That's my stila. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, like any superhero, we have to start with your origin story. What can you tell us about your early beginnings and where your acting aspirations began? Well, um, I was born in Germany. We spent a few years there, um, but I was pretty young, so I don't really remember much. Um, and then we moved to California, where my mom is from, and we stayed in California uh, for a few years. Um, and then we finally moved to Maryland, where I was raised. And Maryland is amazing. Um, I don't know if you've ever been, but... I have. Yeah. Yeah, we're like 10, 15 minutes outside of Washington, D.C. And that's basically where I, the area of Maryland that I'm from. So I had this beautiful cultural, like, this very Black experience, as you know, growing up and, and being surrounded by. Um, so then after that, I went to Hampton University, which is a historically Black college and university. Um, and then I came back and worked for the government because it's Washington, D.C. And that's what of you're course. supposed to do. <laughs> and then um after working for the government i just I, I it was something in my bones telling me this isn't what i'm supposed to do like i would watch shows i'd watch commercials i'd see plays and i just knew i'm supposed to express myself i have a lot pent up inside of me and that pent up you know uh energy is supposed to be expressed in a way that it could heal people through my work you know whether it be uh playing characters that are suffering traumas that you know other people are suffering or watching characters overcome those traumas um which to me is the most important part so that's kind of what really plagued me and i just knew that i wasn't service servicing my purpose by staying in dc working for the government and it's easy because the money is easy but it's just it wasn't me and so i moved to california um with a doll in a dream <laughs> and uh yeah it's just kind of been history since then you know really like I, I'm at nine years in California so really like I took step for step for step for step no steps are skipped whatsoever was there a particular film a show or an actor that you really connected with or you know you look back at and say boy that was that was one of the moments that really got me going um, I'm a very spiritual person. So for me, a lot of my connections that kept me going were these little moments where I felt like it was God telling me you are exactly where you're supposed to be in the right time, right place. There was this actress um, that when I was younger, I mean, she was, I mean, she's still, she's amazing. She's to me like royalty when it comes to acting. Her name is Lynn Whitfield. And, you know, I grew up watching her in Eve's Bayou and just all these amazing projects. Uh, I remember her in uh, The Line Between Love and Hate, like all these really cool projects. And my mom, who's in the sorority, met her at a, an event their sorority had. And um, she said to my, my, my mom said to her, my daughter just moved to California to be an actor. So any advice you can give her. And Lynn said, how about this? Give her my email and I'll meet up with her. 
And so my mom gave me her email and I literally emailed Lynn Whitfield every single day, every single day. And she never responded. And so then I (laughs) I emailed her weekly um, and she never responded. So then I kind of cut it back to like once a month. And this was like in 2012. So then we fast forward to like 2000 and maybe like 14, 15. Um, I think it was around 2014, 15. Yeah. Couldn't been any later than 15, any earlier than 14. I was really low and I hadn't booked in a while. Really, I hadn't booked anything to me that was substantial. And I was depressed and I was just like questioning whether or not I should keep going, if I should just go back to Maryland. And my friend was having a birthday party and it was my job to get the cake. And I was just like, they would do it for me. Let me get up and get this cake. So I get up. I was living in West Hollywood at the time. And I go and I park in this park, this parking lot, but I park all the way in the back so that I could use the space between my parking spot and my, um, in the store just to sulk more, you know what I mean? <laughs> like just to be more sad. <laughs> and as I'm walking through the parking lot, she walks up and she's going in the same store and I see her and I'm like, it's you. And I mean, she's Lynn Whitville. So to her, she probably thinks I'm a super fan, which I am. Stalker. <laughs> Yeah, but like, you know what I mean? Like, I, it wasn't my, my reasoning for stopping her wasn't because of my fanness for her. It was because, wow, it's you. And she stops me. She goes, yeah. And I was like, you don't know me personally, but you met my mom at your AKA event a few years ago. You gave her your email address to give to me. And, I, and then she stops me. She says, you're the one that keeps emailing me. And I'm like, yeah. She's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I never got back to you. You know, um, so much is going on. I have to go to DC this weekend, but I'll I'll email you this weekend. So just email me again. And I emailed her again and she never emailed me back. (laughs) But it was like this moment for me of like God telling me you are exactly where you're supposed to be. Like I could have not gone to that store. I could have gone to the store just a little bit later. I could have parked in the front of the parking lot instead of the back of the parking lot. There's a million things I could have done instead. And to see one of the first things come around that, to see something come around that was one of the first things I encountered when I got to LA in 2012, it to me was just like God's way of telling me, just keep going. There's Mm -hmm. something on the other side of all of this. Just keep going. So yeah. That was your sign. That was my sign. Ryan Wilder read Ghost Kid as a child. Were you mm-hmm. into comics growing up? Yeah. I, well, I was into Batman. Like, I was a huge Batman fan. Um, and, 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 yeah, I was into I Batman. would have been totally disappointed if you didn't say Batman, by the way. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. <laughs> um, yeah, I liked Batman comics. I loved Batman movies. I loved, um, I even loved Catwoman. I was a huge Catwoman fan. Um, because I'm a huge Eartha Kitt fan. And so just having the scene Eartha Kitt do her thing and then Hallie do her thing and then, you know, all of the queens that have, have taken that role on do their thing. I've always just loved Gotham. I've always loved, I've always loved the darkness of Gotham. Like to coexist in that kind of world was just really cool to me. The, the role of Ryan Wilder was created following the departure of Ruby Rose and the disappearance of Kate Kane. And since it was a new character, how much influence do you have in creating and evolving Ryan's persona? I think a lot, honestly. I think that Caroline did an amazing job. Caroline Dries, our show creator, did an amazing job creating this character. And... Um, when her and I met, she's the one who laid down the foundation of who this character was. And it just so happened that a lot of what she laid down, I was very similar to. Like, you know, Ryan had this plant that was represented by her mother and her relationship with her mother. And she kept the plant with her. And like, I am a huge, anyone that knows me, like I'm a huge plant person. Like I'm surrounded in plants constantly. Like, constantly. You are. <laughs> I'm surrounded in plants constantly. So to have even that small little thing, you know, and then it's just like, as time went on and I started to understand this character more, we had a lot in common. We had, we, there's a lot that's different, but we had a lot in common. So in, in developing the character, there are little things that like I asked her about, like, can we add this to kind of help, you know, develop her even more if she loves this plant and her mother was this like beautiful spirit that took such care of plants and things like that. Maybe she's a vegan. 
maybe she got that from her mother. And so Carolyn was like, I love that. And I'm a vegan. So it was kind of perfect. And then, you know, her just there, it was like little things like that, you know, that we kind of like found that made Ryan who she was that I felt like I, I really wanted to, you know, um, include in her character. I read that you've trained extensively in Muay Thai. Do you enjoy the fight scenes and physical demands of the role? I am obsessed with the fight scenes and physical demands. Um, I'm a physical person. I, 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 I release physically. I know some people release, you know, in a, a lot of different kinds of ways, but I love releasing physically and I love contact. And so the best part about having, you know, a stunt team is that you can safely have these amazing fights, you know, and you, and, and if you're fighting the stunt team, obviously you don't punch them, but there's still moments where you get to make contact. And that's really cool and it feels good. <laughs> I bet. Um, yeah. And then also I, I've always kind of saw myself being a, an actor that did a lot when it came to action. Um, you know, like I love Tomb Raider and, you know, if there's ever a moment to, to claim that I'm claiming that now, like wanting to be the next Tomb Raider. Um, I loved Columbiana. I loved just these, these films that showed badass women. Love it. <laughs> is that was is Batwoman your first sort of like physical type of role where you get to show off what you can do to this capacity yeah 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 uh Mad Hatter Alice Killer Croc Dr. Mary Hamilton who has become Poison Ivy and let's not forget Jada Jet your mother uh who is your most formidable foe and why mm. I think right now, if you're caught up, it will definitely be Nick Creekin's character um, of um, Marcus Jett, who's actually my biological brother in the show. Um, and it's because there's this conflict between stopping him and he's also my brother. I'm trying to remember, because it's so hard, because I know all the way up until now, so I'm making sure I'm not giving any spoilers. He went on hiatus on seven, and seven. He, have you, are you caught up? I'm caught up, but, you know, we don't have to, we don't have to go well, any further than this. But I do think that that part has been released. He's kind of like our big bad, you know what I mean? And I think yeah. that Ryan's dilemma is what a lot of our heroes' dilemmas tend to be when you love someone that isn't a good person, you know, um, or mm -hmm. isn't a good person in the moment. So this is something Kate Kane dealt with with Alice. Obviously, this is something Ryan Wilder is dealing with with Marcus. Um, you know, Batman had his foes that were like at one point, like even like the story of Two Face in the in the Dark Knight, right? In the uh, the Dark Knight movie, that started off as a person that he really believed in, and you know, and wanted to win. And then obviously something went wrong, and now he is an enemy. So, yeah, I think those are the hardest foes to have to have to have to encounter because you don't want to hurt them. You don't want to send them to Arkham where you know they won't get a chance for redemption, you know? Yep. What's your favorite perk about being Batwoman? Is it the Bat suit, the Batmobile, the Bat cave, or something else? Mine is the stunts, but specifically the ones that allow me to fly. Because you oh. know, humans don't fly, but I do. They harness me in. And they have flown me all around Vancouver. <laughs> like, I have gone up really high. I've come down fast. Like, I've, I've been in every different type of direction as far as, like, how my body has been positioned. So I literally feel like this show allowed me to fly. Well, I was going to ask you, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? But maybe it would be flying? Me personally? Yeah. Uh, well, to a certain extent, so mine would be to be able to, um, I guess, as astro, I wouldn't say it's astro project because that's taking your yourself out of your body, but like, I can take my actual body to a whole other location. Yes, that would be mine. Because I miss my family, like, it would be so cool to work Monday through Friday, and on Saturday, instead of going through this whole, like, getting on a plane situation, I can go, you know, I can snap my fingers and end up in Maryland or L.A. When it's raining or snowing in Vancouver, exactly. you're exactly. in Florida. I used to 
think I was um, going to, you know, do you remember the TV show, Sabrina the Teenage Witch? Absolutely. I used to think that when I turned 16, I would become a witch or however old she was, maybe 13, 14. When I turned that age, I would become a witch. And I turned that age and I didn't become a witch and I was pissed. So I was like, I'm going to get all of my powers and I can't wait to see what my powers are. But it's funny because now, fast forward years later, I do feel like I've found my superpowers in other ways. Like, they don't have to be so, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm sure some people can fly, but they don't have to be that anymore to me. I have found my powers. That's amazing. Is, is there anything you can tell us or tease us about that woman in 2022? Oh, my goodness. It's a lot. There's so much going on, and it's so cool. It's so fun. Um, this season, to me, has been absolutely, like, action-packed. It's so rooted in, like, so much of the Batman world. So you get to see these epic villains that you grew up watching. And then you get to see women fight them. You know what I mean? And I say women because it's not just me. Like, Sophie, the, the character played by Megan, um, Megan Tandy, Tandy, that character is a badass this season. She's like literally right beside me kicking butt. And then uh, Victoria, she plays um, Renee Montoya. She is kicking butt. So it's like to see these powerful women, I think this is what makes our show so special. You know, we're, we're getting to see these beautiful, powerful women, you know, literally kick butt. And I don't think I've seen it in this type of capacity. There's this beautiful fight scene in the returning episode that, like, I think when everyone sees it, they're going to lose their mind. It just gives me Charlie's Angels, like, 2022, you know? And I think we miss that. I think we miss seeing powerful women on screen. And I'm just really, really excited. It's funny because my cousin sent me this news article that used my name or my picture or, uh, as an example of, women replacing men in in powerful roles and how that's becoming tox, toxic to our, our country. And they use Batman as an example. Obviously, they're ignorant because I didn't replace any male. Batman still exists and Batwoman has right. always existed for years. Um, but it goes to show how important this type of representation is. Because what that means is as a little girl, if I'm watching this and I get to watch these beautiful women kick butt and fight for what's right. And, and not to say that having a male counterpart isn't beautiful and beneficial, but to be able to do it without one and see that they can defend themselves. It's just, it's so enlightening, enlightening and powerful and inspiring. So yeah, I'm just really excited about the second half. I think the second half gives us a lot of that. That's awesome. And that's what Zenoscope is all about, too, by the way. We are a comic book publisher with the largest cachet of female kick-butt heroes in the world. Yes. It's, it's, it's interesting. My partner um, trains women specifically on self-defense. And with everything going on, we have to be able to prepare ourselves no matter what, because obviously we can't always have someone with us, or we can't always have, like, you know, a little may spot or whatever you feel like carrying to protect yourself. And so, you you know, it's always good to know a few basics to get yourself out of an unsafe situation, you know? And I also hope that our show promotes that. It promotes women realizing that they can physically protect themselves and maybe they'll start getting into classes, simple self-defense classes that gives them the basics so that they can feel more powerful and empowered when they're walking around by themselves. I love that. My, my last question for you today, apart from Batwoman, what other projects do you have in the works that you can share and tell us about? Well, Batwoman has taken up a lot of my time because we basically shot two seasons back to back. So I couldn't work on anything. We, didn't, wow. we only got a six week break between season two and season three. That's why I said, whew, we're about to wrap in two weeks and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with going home and taking a little hiatus and kind of just work on myself and relax, you know. Um, be with your plants. Be with my plants. I got to buy new plants. Well, my best friend's been taking care of a good group of my plants, but I feel so bad for taking plants back from people. 
I'm like that. Like I kind of feel mm. like I should let her have them, but they're my plants. I got to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Javicia, thank you so much for joining us. We're huge fans here at Zenoscope. Wishing you all the best and a happy new year. Thank you, Ryan. You can watch the current season, season three of Batwoman on the CW by going to cwtv.com forward slash shows forward slash Batwoman, along with all sorts of extra features and goodies. Seasons one and two of Batwoman are available for streaming right now on HBO Max, and be sure and check out Javicia in the family business and always a bridesmaid, available right now on BET+.